Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm so happy to see so many people who are joining us today. Uh, my name is Bajir. I'm uh, the man behind the curtain here at LearnBridge Online, uh, a site which um, made to be able to learn from the best teachers around the world. Let me uh, mute that echo. Uh, this is one of the largest events that uh, LBO has been able to put together so far. And uh, I'm really, really grateful that you all came by to join us. Uh, good morning, Rosemary. Hello, Anne. Hello, Margaret. Hello, Sally. Thank you, everyone, for leaving comments. Uh, I'm going to call Jack Stocken up in a second, uh, the one, the man we're all here to see and learn from. Um, again, uh, LBO was imagined as a place where we could learn from teachers who we might not be able to see otherwise. Now, of course, then the world got crazy, and um, uh, I'm even more grateful for the chance to learn from teachers like Jack. And so um, wherever you are, wherever you're joining us from, I hope you're taking good care of yourself, and I'm so excited to connect with you here in this virtual experience. Um, let me hide that uh, ticker because we are getting started. And um, so as we go, uh, please be patient with us. If there are any technical hiccups, we're going to do our best. Uh, we're learning a lot of this uh, as we go. Hi, BP. Hi, Mel. Hi, Christine. Hi, Eric. Um, and yes, keep leaving chats. Keep leaving questions. And a few of those questions we'll be able to relay or share with Jack, and he can respond to your questions. Um, at the end of each hand. So without further ado, and I'm so excited to say this, I hope you'll all join me in a warm virtual round of applause welcoming Jack to the stage. Let's make it, it's hard looking into the camera and it feels kind of like talking into the void. So uh, make him feel welcome and uh, here he comes. Jack, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Bashir. Good morning, everyone. And I'm nervously excited, uh, which apparently is a good thing. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but a warm welcome, I'm Jack Stocken, to all uh, the viewers, those from Yorkshire who've learned with me over the years, those who've been on bridge holidays, those who've recently signed up with my uh, podcast, uh, and all the newcomers as well uh, from this country and around the world. Um, I'm really excited to be bringing you a bridge lesson, and hopefully for instructive and interesting hands today from my very own home. It's great. Yes, we're, we're all connecting probably from our own homes. Well, I'm here to um, to watch along with all the other learners. So, Jack, I'm going to turn it over to you. If I can be of any assistance, just call out my name, and I'm going to hop back on the stage, and I'll help out with whatever in any way I can. Brilliant. But um, all right, I'm going to go sit down with the rest of the students. Brilliant. Take it away, Jack. Thanks so much. I'll get going. Well, it's very nice to see see you all. Well, you actually, I can't see you, but you can see me. Um, and here we go. The well, first hand we've got, let's have a look. You can all see it. Yes, no bid. East is the dealer. You can see the D there. So they pass. Just turn that down a little bit so we don't have so many loud beeps. There we go. And pass uh, from south as well. And west. Well, here we go. Um, seven clubs. What would you bid with that, if anything? Well, it's a classic three club opener. A uh, weak hand with seven cards. There we go. Uh, notice, by the way, that you've got a five-card major on the side. Well, most players wouldn't open um, three of a minor with a four-card major. It's not a good idea because you end up losing out on a major suit fit. But the key thing is here, of course, you've had two passes. Um, your partner has passed. They're not going to get into the bidding. So you can be as, uh, you know as exciting as he possibly can to try and uh, take away bidding space from the opponent. So, But that's a good little tip. Don't normally open three of a minor with a four-card major. Uh, just pass. Otherwise, you might miss out on the fit. Uh, let's move on to north. Well, that's a very nice hand for Monday morning. Uh, 7, 10, 16, 19 points. Really lovely hand. Now, some people there would just bid three diamonds, but that just doesn't do justice to the hand. You know, that might be the final contract. So this hand is absolutely perfect for... The takeout double. Good. Short in clubs, partner please bid. And that's, of course, what our series of lessons will be on, on the 1st of June. We'll be doing all sorts of different types of double. Um, perfect. So short in, uh, well, we teach SOS uh, for double. So that's short in the opponent's, the opener's suit. Uh, here we've got a, a void, which is great. Could be one or two cards. Uh, we've got an opening hand, so 12 plus points. And support, the final S, for the other three suits. At least three cards. Good. Well, East, what do they do? 
Well, they've got four clubs and really a pretty, pretty lousy hand. But look at the vulnerability. East-West are not vulnerable against vulnerable opponents. They're in white. So what we do opposite a preempt is we bid to the level of the fit, even with rubbish hands such as that. So we add the seven cards up that we know partners got to the four clubs that we've got. That's 11. That's 11 tricks. So let bid, let's bid five clubs there. And don't do it nervously if you're playing with a bidding box, shaking as you put the bid down, you know, or if you're speaking, five clubs. Look as though you want to make the contract. There'll be some opponents out there thinking, oh, you must have a good hand to be bidding five clubs. But of course, most players know that you're bidding to the level of the fit. Right, let's move on to South. Well, South doesn't have to bid, of course. The double's been cancelled. But listen, your partner has doubled. They must have a, a decent hand. And also, the opponents have got 11 clubs. You've got two that's 13. Your partner must be voiding clubs. I would definitely be getting into the action here with a five spade bid. Good. You don't want to let the opponents play in five clubs. Now, normally the preemptor, the three clubber, doesn't bid again. You know, that's one of the rules. But look at this shape. You know, three losers in hearts, a loser in diamonds. It's a seven, seven, six shape. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, seven, five, sorry. Seven, five come alive. Uh, so they can bid six clubs as a sacrifice bid. It might go, you know, not expecting to make it, but even if it goes one or two down, or even three down, doubled, it's better than them making five spades or even a slam. Good. And the vulnerability is with you on this hand, of course. Uh, two down. In fact, six clubs would only be <clears throat> would only be two down. Uh, doubled, that's only 300. Back to north. Well, that's one of the nicest hands I've seen all day. We can go six spades. Partners bid five spades out of the blue. And really, there's very few losers there. So six spades it is. No one else is going to do any bidding. Although if you were playing duplicate, there would be a slight, uh, you know, slight cause for West maybe bidding seven clubs here. But there's no guarantee six spades is going to make. Uh, so it'd be a bit brave to bid seven clubs. Well, that would be the winning action on this hand as we speak. Um, let's get down to the play. Well, West is the opener. No point leading a singleton, of course. We don't have any trumps. Uh, that would not be a good thing to do. So we kick off with the ace of clubs. You never know. The opponents might have one uh, club in each hand. Very good. Well, thank you, partner, for the dummy. That's a really nice hand. And, well, it's lovely. We've got loads of winners in diamonds and hearts. Just got to be careful about the trumps. I might be a bit careful about these two clubs as well. We might need to do something there. But let's trump the first one. Good. And let's draw a round of trumps to see what's happening. Normally a good idea. And just a little tip for you here. We could have discarded a red card there, the three of hearts. But I'd like to play a little trick on my opponents. Play the five of clubs. Make it look like a spade. A black card on a black card, if you like. It uh, occasionally catches a sleepy declarer uh, sleeping, uh, but not today. Oh, well, we've got a 4 nil trump break. That means the knave of spades is always going to make... So that's a certain loser. But what we have to do is be slightly careful now, because if we just play out our winners, they will trump in at some point, play a club, and we'll lose to the king. We'll go one down. So let's rough this losing club now before we forget about it. That's very important to do that. Good. OK, now we can play the king of spades. Drawing out another round of trumps. Discard another black card. Uh, let's come back to hand with a diamond. All following. We'll draw out the penultimate trump, if you like. Knave of spades. And now let's just see what happens. Let's pay out our winners. We'll play on the diamonds. There we go. By the way, you will, of course, be able to see all these hands on replay uh, in the next day or two when Bajir puts them up. And you'll be able to play them at your own pace and also uh, pause, you know, pause the video, see how the bidding would have gone, etc. OK, let's play our final diamond, which is a winner. They'll rough in, say, with the knave of spades. We will discard. They'll come back a club. But we've all got, just got winners now. The ace or king of hearts. And we'll just quickly play out these last few. And there we go. 
I think, good. Well, we made our 12 tricks. An exciting hand to start off with. Plenty of bidding. And uh, noting that three club opener, okay with a five card major, but only because partner had passed. I wouldn't be opening three clubs in first or second seat uh, with such a good five card major. Um, and then the play of the hand, really just crucially, I'm, some players would have gone down on this hand, roughing that losing club before playing out our winners. Uh, very good. Well, that's the first hand. Uh, Bajir, uh, over to you. Any questions? Shall I load up the second hand? Uh, not just yet. Let's give uh, any folks who have a question about that first hand a chance to type it in or even think of it. I know um, us learners, it can take a second. There's also a slight delay uh, between when we're speaking and when it arrives on your screen. <laughs> yeah, sure. So we'll uh, give a second there. Uh, so, yes, if you have a question, please type it in the chat and maybe we can pass it along. While we're waiting for that, I just want to um, follow up. Uh, Jack had mentioned that he's teaching some online lessons on doubles starting in June. And um, uh, I'm just so excited that he agreed to teach these classes here at LBO. Everyone is more than welcome. Um, we will keep trying to do free events like this, but these lessons are ones that um, you can join the class. It is a smaller setting, so there's more interaction. You can answer more questions and you can ask more questions. And if you are interested, you can go to jack.learnbridgeonline.com. I'll put that in the chat as well. Um, now we have, ah, here, here's a question. This is from, oh, I love this name, Hippocrates Prize. Jack, do you see that question there? I love that name. And here's the question. Let me just have a quick look, Bajir. There we go. Oh, yes. Why did East delay taking the knave of spades? Uh, yes, it's a good question. Um, it didn't make any difference, really, as soon as, you know, they were always going to make their knave of spades. Um, it didn't make any difference. They could have taken it earlier. Uh, they could have taken it uh, earlier. Um, later. Yeah, so it didn't really make any difference on taking the neighbor spades. Uh, they could have, as I say, taken it at any time. It's always going to win. That would be their only winning trick. Mm, thank you for that question and for the others. Let's, let's uh, put in a few more. Hi, Alison. Thanks for leaving the question. Thank you, Alison. And a nice, uh, thank you, Alison. A nice picture of you there as well. Uh, we say they push them into a slam. To be honest with you, even if, uh, it's a very good question, even if West had passed and not bid six clubs, uh, I as North would definitely have bid six spades on that hand with such a rock crushingly good hand. Uh, once partners bid five spades, I'm not going to stop short of a slam. Uh, so certainly it was a good question. Playing duplicate, of course, the winning action would be to bid seven clubs. Uh, only only uh, three off, I believe. Uh, doubled would have only been 500, but a risky bid, uh, that seven clubs. Six spades might not have been making, uh, especially with you being void in, in spades. Thank you, Alison. A similar question from Tony. I think it's uh, covered as well. I think we covered um, that one, yes. Yes, I mean... And, uh, here's also, another one. Yes. Hello, Sally. Can you use losing trick count as well? A very good question, Sally. No is the answer. Uh, losing trick count only for the opening and responding side. Yes, it's only the overcallers who bid to the level of the fit. You know, uh, so if you overcall one spade... The other overcaller bids to three spades, uh, say, with four cards. But very good question. Losing trick count only for the opener and responder. It's quite a common mistake, that. Oh, thank you, everyone who left questions. And a helpful suggestion from Susan. Thank you. Susan's requesting, uh, before we load up the next hand, let's leave uh, the previous hand up while we talk about questions. That's uh, really helpful. And we will... Uh, try to do that with the next one. Yeah. We weren't sure if uh, you guys would ask questions, so <laughs> you guys are just a great class. <laughs> All right, I am going to sit back down and uh, let Jack bring us into hand two. I will bring us into hand two, Bashir. Uh, I think I'm ready. I can see it here before me. Uh, so there we go. Yes, yes, I'll try and leave the hand up just so we can chat about it. It will only take me a second to load up. Well, that was a fun hand to start off with and some great questions. Let's move on to the second hand. So we've got 16 points. Well, most of you watching are Ackle players, UK, Ireland. Uh, you would open a heart on this hand. I know that some of you are playing standard American uh, from overseas. Uh, you would open one no trump. But we're playing Ackle today, so it's a one heart opening. I'm sure the final contract would be the same. Um, East, well, marginal overcall, only eight points. I wouldn't overcall that vulnerable, but we're non-vulnerable. And we've got a very good suit, uh, you know, 
so this is more for the lead than anything else. I'm not expecting particularly to play in two clubs at all. I wouldn't overcall two clubs with five, three, three, two balanced. No, that's quite dangerous. But here we've got a bit of shape. Five, four, two, two. And we've got length in the opponent's suit. Partner might be short. Uh, so I'm just going to put in two clubs here. I wouldn't do it vulnerable, as I said, but non-vulnerable. There we go. Um, well, South is fine uh, to bid two diamonds. New suit at the two level, 10 plus points. We've only got nine here, but we can apply the rule of 14, which is number of cards in longest suit, which is clearly five, added to number of points, which is nine. That comes to 14. It's a rule I stick to like glue. If we'd have only had eight points here and a five card suit, that's only 13 we would have passed and maybe come into the bidding later. Okay, so two diamonds there, just promising four cards, no bid from there. Now this is the main feature of the hand. If, if East hadn't overcalled two clubs, we'd have rebid two no trumps, which in Akol is 15, 16 points, playing traditional methods. Um, but we have a problem because to bid no trumps now would always guarantee a stopper in clubs. If they led clubs, which they will, we'll lose the first five or six tricks, maybe. So we have a little gadget here, which some of you certainly won't have come across. It's why we're doing it now. Some of you will have done. But let's remind you, how do we ask partner for a stopper? Well, we bid the opponent's suit. Three clubs. Good. If you're playing at a, at a bridge club, you would have to alert it. Um, we learn at a very early stage as beginners that you never bid the opposition suit naturally. It's one of the first thing I teach them, although some of them do try and do it. Um, so as opener or responder, three clubs here says, partner, I'm looking for no trumps. Do you have a stopper in clubs? Again, it is forcing to game. So you must know that partner's got enough points for game. Here we've got 16. Partners must, well, the equivalent of 10. So you must have at least 25 points to ask for this stopper, uh, this game forcing. Uh, no bid from East, although they, they possibly could double for the lead. And South, well... They've got a stopper in clubs, so they will bid three no trumps. Partner, I have a stopper. doesn't have a name, this particular bid. It's just a gadget uh, asking for a stopper for no trumps. And if they didn't have a stopper, well, they'd bid something else. Uh, hopefully, they wouldn't pass. That wouldn't be good for the partnership. Uh, but accidents do happen, and hopefully, you would have a laugh about it. Um, if they didn't, they'd rebid their diamonds. If they had five cards, they'd show three cards support for hearts. They'd bid anything else. Uh, apart from three no trumps. Okay, so that's interesting on the auction. Now we've got to try and make it. Uh, so opening lead, well, leading partner suit always keeps them happy. I like to think of terms of Alps, always lead partner's suit in no trumps. And it's top of a doubleton, high for hate, if you like. Good, we thank partner for the dummy. I like to count certain tricks in no trumps. I think you should do as well in a trick one is a good time to do so. Three in spades, a couple in hearts, that's five. And that's it. But we are going to make a trick in clubs uh, with the king. And diamonds, clearly. Uh, those who've had lessons with me before know that I like to call five card suits gold dust. Yeah, whether they be in uh, no trumps or trump contracts. Gold dust, I like that one. Okay, so let's go. Thank you, partner. And East, well, no point playing the ace. Keep the communication going. We know Declara must have the king of clubs. So we play the cheapest of our touching honours, which would be the 10 here. Yeah, third player plays cheapest of touching honours. And here's the thing. Would you win with the king of clubs or would you duck it? Well, there can be no harm whatsoever in no trumps of ducking the first trick, which is what we're going to do. And you'll see why this is so important slightly later. Good. You have to be slightly careful about ducking a king of clubs, though. It can be quite dangerous, but we'll have a look at that in a second. Uh, East perseveres with clubs, uh, the queen. Now, I've seen some players in the past duck this one again. That wasn't good at all, uh, because literally the queen of clubs wins. Uh, East takes their ace of clubs, the king crashes, and you lose the first five tricks, uh, plus a diamond as well. So you have to take the king on the second round. I would be slightly nervous. Uh, you know, you've got to be careful about ducking kings in no trumps because sometimes you end up not making it. Here we know that East has the ace. So as long as we take it on the second round, uh, we'll make it. Good. Let's go with the diamonds. So like any finesse, we need to go to dummy to play towards our king queen. So 
And we'll do that with a spade. And we'll play the 10 of diamonds. Is there any point covering? Well, it's cover an honor with an honor. And the bit I like to add on is, unless it makes sense not to. Well, here with the nine, that's the exception. Only you don't cover when there's consecutive honors in the dummy, like queen, knave, uh, knave, 10, and 10 nines the same. It's not gonna help promote a card. Well, we should rise with the king here. And remember, they can't see our hand here. They can't see our king, queen, so they would take their ace. Good. If they saw the dummy, of course, then they would duck it, but they don't know that we've got the queen. Okay, so West wins the trick with the ace of diamonds. Dangerous to switch to a heart. That would give us an extra trick. So they come back a spade. Nice and safe. It gives nothing away. Back with the diamonds. And we're pleased to see the knave come down there. Gives us a, it saves us a guess. If they hadn't have played the knave there, i.e. they'd have played a low card, we would have run the diamond. They'd just let it go. Wouldn't have played the queen. We would have finessed uh, the knave that we thought East might have had. Obviously, well, they've sorted out that problem by playing it. But if they started off with three to the knave, uh, the odds would have suggested finessing there. And we would have let the nine run. Uh, which would have worked, of course, if he started with three to the jack. Uh, very good. So the eight of diamonds is now a winner. And try and keep the same length as dummy here. It's a good little adage when you're discarding. These clubs are no good to us now. And another diamond winner. Okie dokie, that club can go. And the final diamond winner. Chucking a spade. Things are getting quite interesting. We may yet make uh, an over trick so we can discard a heart. Now this heart can go as well. Good. Well, we're certainly going to make our contract now, but should we try and make an over trick? Let's play the knave of hearts. And again, I hope you've worked out already whether to duck this or not. I would have done. And seeing the ten of hearts there, I would just play low smoothly. Well, we could just run for home now with our ace, king of hearts and queen of spades. I think we'd make one over trick. But it sounds as though West has been very reluctant to discard hearts here. So it can't do us any harm to go for the over trick. And also East has discarded most of their clubs, if we were counting. So let's play for the over trick there. Very important if you're playing duplicate bridge, of course, where over tricks are paramount. And there we go. We're home and dry now. We'll just play out our winners. And the queen of spades as well. Well, when the dust settled, we actually made 11 tricks uh, by taking that heart finesse at the end. Uh, but we had to be careful, of course. Uh, if we hadn't have ducked that club, then when West got in with the ace of diamonds, they'd have played their four of clubs back and we would have been defeated. We'd have gone one down. And that very interesting thing, the bidding, uh, I imagine quite a few of you won't have come across it before or in the distant past, uh, bidding the opponent's suit as opener or responder asking for a stopper for no trumps. Of course, it means something different uh, as an overcall. Uh, we'll discuss that at a later date. Uh, well, thank you, Bajir. Uh, that's hand number two. Mm, thank you, and thank you for everyone leaving comments. I um, I, I don't think I would have um, ducked with that king. I'm so glad to get this lesson. I wonder, I hope I'm not the only one. Uh, we have a question from Dominic, and uh, we got a nice assist from Allison already, but I'm going to relay the question on to you, Jack. Oh, yes, the rule of 14, Dominic. I'd love to explain that a little bit uh, in further detail. It's one of the trickier rules. So say the opponent opens one heart here. If you want to bid a new suit at the two level, i.e. two clubs or two diamonds, that promises 10 plus points. Okay, that's fairly standard. I, or so the, the rule of 14 passing the rule of 14. And what the rule of 14 is, just to go through it, is you add the number of cards in your longest suit, which here was five diamonds, to the amount of total points in the hand, which here was nine. So we add the five to the nine and we got to 14. So we can bid two diamonds, uh, really, because that five card suit and nine points is the equivalent of having 10 points. We really add on an extra point for a five card suit. Had we only had eight points and a five card suit, adding up to 13, we would have passed. Or let's say if they hadn't a bid two clubs as an overcall, we'd have responded one no trump. 
Very good question, though. And I'm glad to go through it in a bit more detail. Thank you for that question. And Alison, thank you again for uh, helping out. Uh, Jane uh, asks, the last two hands, Declare was vulnerable, but the score does not show that. Is that accurate? Or, um... Oh, yes. Yes, don't worry about good question. Don't worry about the score, the minus 460. You know, that's just the way BBO has organized it, yes. Yeah, don't worry about the vulnerability with the score. Thank you, Jane. And uh, Sierra, and I hope I'm saying your name right. There's a beautiful name. This is the sort of question that I always have in my head. I'm glad I'm not <laughs> the only one thinking it. <laughs> so... Ducking. This, uh, yes. this is where I get into trouble. Any clever rules? What, what can you put into our brains that will remember when to duck and when not to? Well, it's a very good question, Kieran. Thank you for asking it. And you know, I'm basically, I tell my students, Bajir, I tell them really to duck as often as you can. You know, I'm trying to talk about ducking aces because that ducking the king was a difficult play to make. That was more advanced. I agree with you. But let's talk about ducking aces. Well, I turn them to, to duck as often as they can. And, and do you know, Bajir, what ducking twice is known as? <laughs> What's that? You're about to find out. Quack, quack. <laughs> I knew quack, something quack. was coming. I felt like <laughs> I was stepping into it there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so really, there was, yeah, so if you can duck twice, duck twice. It's a very simple thing. There used to be a rule, actually, Kieran, called the rule of uh, the rule of seven. It's still around. Um, I don't teach it anymore because people got it confused with the rule of 11. Uh, but do look online uh, to explain the rule of seven, everyone. Uh, really, th what you do with the rule of seven when you're ducking an ace, is you add up the number of cards in the dummy and declarer. So let's say you've got five cards between you with an ace. You subtract those five cards from seven, and that tells you to duck twice. Yeah. But I gave up teaching that rule because it confused people with the rule of 11. I just say duck as often as you can as a general rule. I like that. I like the simplicity. Yeah. Let's take one more question. There's so many um, folks leaving uh, really lovely questions. Yes. Uh, let's do, this will be the last question for this hand before we yes. move on. Yeah. Well, it's lovely to have all these questions for Nola and to help out. A uh, very good question. Is the only responder that uses rule of 14 correct? Yes. This rule of 14 is quite tricky and certainly, uh, again, more information online. Um, but yes, only ever responder. Some people get it confused with overcalling. No, it's only the responder and only responding at the two level. If it goes one club, just bid one heart with six points. It's just that new suit at the two level. Good question. Mm, thank you to everyone for leaving those questions. Jack, uh, why yeah. don't you load up the next hand? I will and, load up the hand. Okay, and while Jack is doing that, I just want to um, let people know, um, anytime you can always reach me directly at this email address, hello at learnbridgeonline.com. And um, one of the things that um, I would most appreciate is um, if there are bridge teachers that you would recommend for a free live stream like this, um, I would love to get in touch with them, and I'd love to um, be able to say you, they were recommended. And uh, I really do hope to be able to keep lining up free uh, online bridge events like this one. So your help in that would be most appreciated, and um, uh, I'll be the one replying. So hello at learnbridgeonline.com. If there are any teachers you love who um, you think would do a good job with an event like this, it would be much appreciated. All right, let's... Uh, See if Jack is back, and it looks like he is. <laughs> I am back. I'm here, Bajir, yes. Um, and I'm here for the third hand. So getting into this uh, stream of things now. And of course, as I said, again, you can always replay these hands later and go through them slowly uh, at your own pace. Um, well, what have we got for you here? Well, the dealer uh, is south. We open one spade. That's it. Just turn that volume down a little bit. There we go. So one spade by south, uh, pass obviously there. Now here's the thing, we're playing, um, well, playing Akol or Standard today. Uh, would you bid one no trump or would you bid two spades? I hope you wouldn't bid two diamonds. That fails the rule of 14. That might be a new rule for some of you watching today. Let's just do that rule of 14 because if you attempted to bid two diamonds, it, part, it fails big time. So you've got five cards in diamonds, seven points, adding up to 12. That's a big fail. So we either bid one no trump dust spin, which is six to nine points in Akol, or we bid two spades. Well, at this intermediate improver level, I wouldn't tell this to my beginners, we bid two spades. Much prefer you to bid uh, two spades there with three card support for the major. You wouldn't do it for the minor. Shows six to nine points and three cards. 
Some people say you need an honor card. I sometimes do it with three little cards. I'm not too bothered. The only time I wouldn't do it is if I had a four, three, three, three shape. Flat as a pancake, I'd bid one no trump instead. Uh, it's good for two reasons. A, because most of the time, uh, South will have five cards or even six in the major most of the time. And also keeps the opponents out of the bidding. If they wanted to bid clubs or hearts, they'd have to come in at the three level. Um, and you very rarely, I must say, uh, play in a 4-3 fit, although more than that at a later date. Um, back to South. Not all of you have done the losing trick count, uh, but those who have, we should do it now. It's a two-hour lesson at a later date. Uh, count the ace-king, queens are missing. So king of spades, ace-king of hearts, three, king of clubs, four, and the ace of diamonds, five. It's a five-loser hand. Do you remember how many losers we... Assume for a two spade bid, those who've done the lesson. Well, it's nine because they might only have six points. So add the two together to 14, away from the magic number, which is 18. No one knows why, but it is. Uh, and that leaves you with a bid of four spades. Yes, try not to ask me a question on the losing trick count uh, because it is literally, it's the hardest thing I teach, I think. And it is normally about an hour's lesson. Uh, but certainly we'll cover that at a later date. Uh, those who are bidding on instinct, uh, if you'd not learned the losing trick count or forgotten it, a very nice hand, 17 points with a six-card major. You'd still, have, uh, you'd still have gone to game. Excellent. Okay, well, let's have the opening lead. Some of you might be tempted to lead a doubleton diamond. It's a bit out of fashion now, I would say, doubleton leads. You rarely strike gold and end up setting up the opponent's suit for them. I would only really lead a doubleton if it was my partner's suit or if it was the unbid suit or had a really nasty hand. Here you've got a standout lead at the Queen of Clubs, promising the knave. Top of a sequence is a really good lead. Well, thank you, partner, for the dummy. And before we do anything, should we count our losers? Some people count certain tricks. That's fine. I like to count my losers in high-level contracts. Uh, it's easier for me to count to four uh, than it is to say nine. Well, looking at the suit, and the way I do this, and it is a more uh, advanced technique, so if you're not uh, au fait with it, it'll take a little while to get used to it. Um, looking there from the Clara's point of view at the dummy. So we've got no losers in spades. We've got almost certainly three in hearts. And we've got one in clubs. None in diamonds. Got, got the ace, and we've got the king in the dummy. So we've got four losers. That's not good news at all for a Monday morning. So what do we do about it? We have to create a winner or get rid of one of our losers. And again, we look to the five card suit. Now, this is quite a tricky technique because a lot of players don't see the value of that five card suit, but it is establishable. And this is called suit establishment with trumps. That's what we're going to do. And the second tricky thing, of course, is executing the plan, playing the cards in the right order. Let's go. Mildly encouraging six there for those who are doing signals. And we'll win with the ace. And when you establish a suit in bridge, you have to do it at the beginning. Don't draw out the trumps. You need these as the entries to dummy. So we play the ace of diamonds, a higher card from the shorter holding. Otherwise, the suit will get blocked. And you see there's no point in taking the diamond, no need to take the diamond finesse here. That would only be a 50-50 chance. We're going to improve dramatically on those odds. Good, so everyone follows suit. Now, we've got to be a little bit careful here. If we trump low with the five of spades, we get over-trumped and we'll be defeated. It's known as sending the boy to do the man's job. Um, so here, let's have a bit of fun. It's a game after all. We could trump with the ten. Let's trump with the ace of spades. Good, bit of fun. Good. Let's show the opponents we mean business. We could have trumped with anyone, you see, because they're all the same. We've got all the high cards. Now we must get to dummy. There's still a diamond out there. Yeah, with a nine of spades. And now we play this diamond here, dropping the queen. We don't need to be so ostentatious now. Just the ten of spades will do. Uh, club can go. We've reached a very good point. That knave of diamonds is a winner. And even if you practice this in the future and only get two-thirds of the way through, you've still done well. Uh, I think many bridge players, in my experience, find this a hard technique, even the more experienced ones. We've got to be slightly careful. 
now because you've done the hard work. But if you play a spade to the king and now play the jack of diamonds, it will get roughed by West and we'll go one down. So we have got to be careful here. Uh, if trumps are three and one, which they are. So we play the queen of spades first. And now we play a small spade to the king. Simultaneously drawing the last trump and accessing dummy for the last time. That's very important to do that. Some people slip up on that hurdle at the end. Now we can play our jack of diamonds. And crucially, hooray, the nine of clubs goes away. That's it. Uh, we can play a heart now. Doesn't really matter. We've done the hard work. Ten of hearts to the king. There we go. The opponents actually could have done slightly better there. We're going to make an over trick, but only because they didn't unscramble their hearts. They could have th uh, thrown something else. Uh, but when we come down to it, we made 450. Yes, we should have been kept to 420 uh, just making. Um, but we made our contract. And uh, interesting in the bidding, of course, look out for that raise to two spades in Akol, just with three cards. When you play Akol, of course, one spade, three spades, a jump, is always four uh, in the major. Don't get confused. And in the play of the hand, establishing that five-card suit was the only way to get rid of that club loser. Um, that was a tough hand, actually. A good one to replay at a later date. Well, thank you, Bajir. Uh, thank you, Jack. So let's uh, give them, uh, while the video catches up to their yeah. uh, their screens, we'll give them a second. And um, I just want to uh, ask everyone watching if you'd be willing to do a small favor, uh, if you haven't already, if you could subscribe to the LearnBridge Online YouTube channel which is um, completely free. It will really help put on events like this. Um, and we'll also keep making uh, shorter videos um, like uh, one Jack and I just made recently, uh, Jack teaching um, another really helpful tip for us. I just put a link in, you can click on that or just click on um, the LearnBridge Online logo uh, when this is done. And again, it would be much appreciated. I, uh, before building um, my own YouTube channel. I always got annoyed hearing people ask for that. And now that I have one, I understand how helpful it is. So uh, my apologies for that, but um, I just want to ask if you would be willing. Um, so yeah, a few more questions. One about losing trick count, which uh, Dominique, thanks for leaving that. But um, uh, thank you. Uh, we'll have to save that for another time. Maybe Jack, we can revisit that in another question or live so. stream or uh, online lessons. Yeah. Um, let's see, a, a repeat question about rule of 14. Bernadette, uh, I'll send out a replay uh, of this whole event and you'll be able to go back and see how Jack answered that previously. And uh, Ricky asks about four card majors versus five card majors. Uh, Jack, just really quickly, any um, response to uh, the it's, different- It's a very different. good question. Uh, that debate will go on for a long time, Bajir. Uh, as you probably know, 95% of the UK and Ireland play Ackle, which is a four card major, weak no trump. The rest of the world, uh, you know, they, they play standard American, five card major, strong no trump. Funnily enough, my brother, he's a big fan of the American system, but, you know, having played bridge for a long, long time, you know, I think in my, in my belief, I'm very happy with Ackle. It's what I'm used to. It's what I played for a long time. If you play if you play Ackle well, you'll 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 do well. You'll win tournaments. You'll win your duplicates. If you play the five card major system well, you'll do well. Because really, at the end of the day, uh, it's judgment, uh, concentration, and experience are the key to winning bridge. So either system, but if you play it well, you'll do well. You could win big tournaments. Uh, that's helpful. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Uh, why don't we move on to the next hand? We're yes. going a little bit longer than we were expecting. Jack, is that all right? We've gotten such. That's fine. Questions. Okay. That's fine. It's, it's good to, I'm fine to go on. And we've got some really good questions coming in as well. That's all part of the interactive experience. Um, I'm just going to load up this last hand, which shouldn't take long. Here we go. And when you get the chance, we got a question from ZP100 about the first hand. Oh, um, yes. So maybe before uh, we launch yeah. into the third one. There's bound to be lots of questions. We've covered a lot of ground uh, in, the, in just these four hands today. Um, and obviously, we're catering for uh, 
uh, intermediate players, uh, more advanced players. Uh, so there'll be hopefully something for everyone. Right. Uh, well, we're on to our final hand here. And a bit of fun to finish. Let's see. So dealer is south. That's one no trump, playing the weak no trump, which most of you do. 12 to 14. Most of you do watching anyway, uh, who are from the UK and Ireland. Uh, there we go. No bid, obviously, from there. And here's the thing. We have got 21 points as north. Some of you might just bid three no trumps, and that would be the end of things. But do you remember how many points you need to make six no trumps? It's 33 or more. And I call it the magic number when I teach. 33 plus with two balanced hands, you should always be in six no trumps. And there's no point asking for aces because you won't be missing two of them. So let's get ready for this bid, shall we now? Hold your breath. Six no trumps. And it's worth doing so just to see the look on your partner's face because uh, they're going to have to play it. Although hopefully it'll be a pleasant experience. Um, you've got the 33. You know I've got 12. You've got 21. That's it, 33 plus. Um, if you only had 19 or 20 points as north balanced, you would invite slam with four no trumps quantitative. Um, good. That would be an invitation to slam. Very good. And that'll bring matters to a close. Fairly straightforward bidding. Um, here's... A very interesting thing on the lead. So normally in no trumps, you'd lead the fourth highest, possibly the four of spades or the five of hearts. One thing I wouldn't do against six no trumps is lead out the ace of spades. I would possibly in a trump contract quite often, but against no trumps, this just helps to Clara, who would set up their king-queen knave. So against six no trumps, and this is the main feature of the hand, you make the safest lead possible. Go for pass what we call passive. So I wouldn't lead the four of spades, and I wouldn't lead the five of hearts. This will just help the declarer. And also, you know your partner at most has got one point. You're not going to establish a suit. So this is a more advanced tip, of course. We go for a diamond. Middle, up, down. Or, or mud. Maybe as clear as mud, some of these hands we're doing today. Um, so there we go. Thank you, partner, for the dummy. And it's a very safe lead. You must be very pleased with that lead, with ace, king, queen of diamonds. Normally, you'd be disappointed. But here, you'd be happy. OK, let's go. And just before we do, let's count our certain tricks. We've got ace, king of hearts, two, four clubs, six, three diamonds, nine. So clearly we must go for spades for the extras. And like any no trump contract, let's do that straight away. To the king. Some players might be tempted to duck the ace here, but when you can't see the queen or the knave, I think in six no trumps I would take it. There we go. Um, now, of course, what are you going to do? Are you going to play a spade back or a switch to a heart? No, I'm just going to continue with a diamond, playing the, uh, the highest one now, the up of the middle, up, down. Nice and safe. Let Declara do the hard work. Good. Let's turn our attention back to spades. So we're one trick short now, but if spades divide three and three, that's going to give us the 12th trick. We just need to count the spades. We only need to count one suit in no trumps. I mean, the world champion will probably count all of them, but us mortals can just count one. Rather like counting trumps out. Oh, and let's throw a black card just to make it look like a spade. Yes, the suit has divided four and two, so the nine is not a winner. We still need that extra trick. Some of you might be tempted now to go over to the ace of hearts and play a heart to the knave, the finesse. That'd be the way to finesse 50-50. Bad luck. West would win with the queen, and you'd go one down. So what we do instead, there's an extra chance. Before taking that heart finesse, let's see if diamonds divide 3-3. Three, three. So let's play a diamond. Remember, we've had two rounds of diamonds already. This is the third round. And lo and behold, they've both followed suit. 3-3, three, three, a 36% chance. But nonetheless, all the worth playing for. So now we can come to hand. Let's come to hand with a club. Plenty of entries. And we can play our 13th diamond. It's a master. Crucially discarding the four of hearts. There. And now we don't need to take the heart finesse. Had diamonds divided 4-2, then yes, we'd have had to have fallen back on the heart finesse over to the ace and up to the knave. And we'd have been unlucky to go one down. Uh, let's just play out the king of hearts now. These are all winners, though. So we can cut a corner now. I'm 
can able to claim this. These are all four winners in the dummy. So I'm just going to claim those before anything goes wrong. And there we go. Six no trumps bid and made. So a fun hand to finish on. Uh, it's been great fun going through these four hands with you. Um, any more questions? There have been some great questions, Bajir. Uh, they, they have been. Gosh, Jack, I wish you were just sitting next to me every time <laughs> I was playing because I, I would have made the mistake of not checking the distribution of those diamonds and I would have missed that and I would have gone down. So, <laughs> well, for a small fee, for which you, I'll come to Tokyo if you if you pay for my airfare. Okay, very good. Next time, next time, we, I cannot wait until we can <laughs> all do this in person, and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, while other people are thinking of the questions and typing them in, let me just uh, return to ZP 100s about hand one, and I'll let you take a look at that, Jack. Yeah. Oh, that's a good question that's come in on hand one. Would you have done a bit of three clubs just with the queen and knave with seven points? I definitely would. Yes, really, to open three clubs, you need a seven-card suit with at least two honours, and especially a ZP third in hand when you can be slightly more liberal uh, with your opening bids uh, when, you know, when your partner's passed. Yeah, no, definitely, I would go with queen and knave. Uh, thank you for that, ZP. Uh, Howard asked a uh, nice question, not related to bridge, but how can I watch this video again? Thank you for asking. Um, on this same page where you're watching it now, when this is finished, you'll be able to see the replay. I forget if on YouTube there might be a little bit of time while it processes. But if you are also on the LearnBridgeOnline.com newsletter or on any of Jack's newsletters, you will be informed and we're going to send out a link for the replay video as well. So thank you for asking for that. Uh, question from Jackie. Oh, yes, in hand two, could respond have replied a negative double uh, after the overcall. Um, I don't think so. Um, a lot of people, Jackie, haven't done the negative double. Uh, but for those who have, really, if you were to double there, it would guarantee um, uh, four cards in the major, uh, which I don't believe we had. No, no. So if it went one heart, two clubs, a negative double there would promise four cards in spades which we didn't have. So yes, better just to make a natural bit of two diamonds, more descriptive. Good question there. And another question about uh, hand two. And I think we'll have to make this our last question. Thank you uh, again to everyone leaving questions. And I'm sorry to the people who uh, we won't be able to get to, but we've already kept Jack longer than I was promising him. So, That's fine. Uh, I it's, hope... it's fine. On the second hand, well, I think that was the three no Trump hand, Ricky. Uh, just, and we were, uh, we were bidding with four card pages on the second hand, uh, so the bidding would just as gone as it as it did. Uh, I believe that was the three no tramp hand, the one heart opening, two club overcall, two diamonds, etc. Yeah, no, that was a uh, all the all the bidding we've done today, by the way, has been alcohol based uh, for the UK uh, and Ireland. But you should even if you're playing a different system, uh, you should have still ended up in the same uh, contract. Hopefully, thank you for that question. Uh, and I just want to uh, invite everyone again, if you're interested in uh, learning with Jack online, his online lessons are starting uh, June 1st is the first one and uh, four weeks of it. Let me uh, just chat through a link as well, but you can always find it through learnbridgeonline.com. We'll also keep doing the best we can to line up free events like this as well as uh, free videos. So get in touch for any reason. Jack, I cannot thank you enough. It's really been an honor having you come join us for this. And I know I'm going to watch this again because uh, you just packed it with lessons that will be so helpful for all of us learners. But thank you, Jack. Yes, thank you. Just to finish off, Bashir. Yeah, lots. Of, I picked four really interesting and instructive hands. There was a lot of different things in those hands for people to cover uh, for experienced and inexperienced players. And, and yes, uh, we'll keep you all in touch with my lessons on the 1st of June. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, all sorts of doubles. You know, we'll be doing the uh, takeout double, the penalty double, uh, the reopening double, double when you're too strong to overcall. Uh, you know, all sorts of doubles uh, will be covered in those four lessons. Yeah. Well, I just can't wait for that. So thank you again. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the really fantastic comments and questions. It's much appreciated. We're just sort of staring into the void of our computer screen. So your, yeah. your questions and comments let us know that um. We're, we're, we're here uh, enjoying learning bridge together. And uh, so until next time, thank you again. Thanks, Jack. Thanks very much. See you soon. Take care. Bye.